Hey all, welcome back. I'm Erin the Two Martini Stitcher here on YouTube and Instagram and this is my Floss Tube YouTube channel uh, that's all about cross stitch. So here in the cross stitch community we like to call our videos Floss Tube videos because it's all about all about the needle arts. I also do a little bit of knitting and I'll be showing some knitting this week and I don't know anything else that that comes up. Uh, today is Thursday February 18th uh, and it's kind of the middle of the day so I have tea today instead of a cocktail and it's in my seriously this is my favorite mug it came out of the Black Needle Society Frog Warts year one box last year and it's does everybody have that favorite mug if it's clean that's the mug you go for this is it I just have some just some breakfast tea in there today so Hope everybody had a good week. I am so worried and keeping in touch with all of my friends in Texas that are uh, suffering through the cold and power outages. And we had a big snowstorm here over the weekend, but we don't get a lot of snow here in the Seattle area. And it does tend to cripple the city a little bit, but we get, we get snow once or twice a year. And I do have to say that I think as the years go on and we get probably a little bit more and more snow, uh, the cities seem to be ramping up. I There seems to be more plows. Like I used to joke that our city didn't even have a snow plow. They definitely do now because um, they were they were out plowing and and uh, yeah, we had a we had a huge rainstorm, rain and windstorm in January, and we lost power for a few days. And I think that that big windstorm with all the rain knocked down any trees that were going to come down. So we kept power <laughs> this, this storm around. So just hope everybody is staying as safe and warm as possible. And we'll just, we'll just, we, us stitchers, we'll stitch by candlelight, by, I think I've stitched, stitched by headlamp. <laughs> we do what we can. So we did get some snow over the weekend and my oldest daughter came over from her place and hung out with us during the snowstorm. She figured if she was going to be snowed in, she might as well be snowed in at home. And so that was, that was good, but I feel like I don't have as much to show this week. I also had two days where, um, I have a, a little cornea, a little degenerative cornea and had a little bit of a flare up of that and couldn't really see real well for a couple of days. So there were a couple of days that were just not much stitching. Turns out though that even with not really being able to see out of one eye, I can knit. <laughs> so there was some good knitting and that's good to know. It's good to know that when I have a little flare up like this, that um, even if I can't see the linen, <laughs> knitting, I can see knitting needles. So I think this will be pretty quick today because I feel like I don't have a lot to show, don't have much mail, um, nothing exciting is going on. We were snowed in a little bit. It was Valentine's Day, but husband and I don't really do much to celebrate Valentine's Day in regular years, so <laughs> I did get him a new game, to get him a new two-player game, a two-player card version of Catan. If you're... If you are a tabletop game player, you probably know Catan, and it's a family favorite, and I got a two-person card version. That's pretty fun. All right, let's get to stitching. What did I stitch on this week? I don't have any finishes after all the finish excitement last week. You would have thought that I might have, with being snowed in, might have finished that needle book, fully finished that needle book. Nope. Nope, sure didn't. Maybe this coming week. We can always hope. But so no finishes this week and I only worked on a few projects. The full coverage piece this week was Harry Potter book covers. Let me get out the, Eek. I have my huge bag. This lives in a bag from Garon Toten Bags. I love their huge size. I think it's like 12 by 18. Holds so much stuff. Um, and Harry Potter is off the Q-snaps. Okay, 
So this is the piece I'm talking about, Harry Potter book covers by Fox and Teacup Designs. I'm doing the Super Size Max Color version, and I'm stitching it on 18 count Ada, called for DMC, uh, two strands full cross. And if you ever have any questions about what fabric or maybe the designer of a chart, all of the info on my, every work in progress I have is linked in the description box. There's a link to my spreadsheet. It's my personal whip spreadsheet. There's a read only link in there. So you can go and search up any information that I may, I sometimes forget. I sometimes forget to mention fabric or floss. So Harry Potter book covers is off the cue snaps and I ironed it. It's the only ironing I ever do for a floss tube. So I'd gotten down to the bottom of uh, the cue snap and I needed to move it. So I figured this was the perfect time to show you the whole thing. So here's the whole thing. There we are. There we are. And this is, I hit this past week 40%. So, I'm, which is crazy because I may be what? What do we think? A quarter of the way, not quite a third of the way done with book three, but that's 40% of the pattern. So, I'll get you up close. This is where I've been working, is right here. Some of these blocks of confetti almost killed me. <laughs> they didn't, it was going, they were just slow. A little slow going here because um, some of these blocks had like 30, 40 color, 30, 35 colors in them. So, there it is, Harry Potter book covers. I still love this project, y'all. Still love it. Uh, this is on my WIPCO board this year. Um, and my goal is to get books three and four finished. <laughs> that might have been a little, <laughs> as usual, I'm a little ambitious on the goals. But uh, I've been working, so this week, Farewell to Anger came back out, but then this will go back on the Q-Snap. And I'll keep working my way down, book three. Keep working my way down. There it is, and all of it's out of the Q-Snap ironed glory. It doesn't happen often. Oh, I should take pictures. I should take pictures and post on Instagram. I've been bad about posting on Instagram lately. I don't, I don't know why. I just have not been that great. I feel like because I feel like I'm working on the same couple things, so I always do better the months that I'm rotating projects every day. Don't know why. Okay, what else did I work on last week? On the 12th, I pulled out Crosses of the Kingdom because I always try to work on that on the 12th. This is Crosses of the Kingdom by Rosewood Manor. I'm stitching this for my parents' 50th wedding anniversary, which will be next year. Not this August, but next August. Um, and so I try to work on it on the 12th of every month. I'm stitching this in Anchor Black and Petite Treasure Braid PB40. And I got some good progress on it this month. So here is where I am. I know I did this whole uh, cross, this one, this one, some of these little ones, and then I started this bigger gold one down here. This one, top of that one. And this is on 32 count, 32 count just antique white linen. There it is. That was pretty some pretty good progress. I feel good about I feel good about this one this month. So um yeah, so this will come back out next month on the 12th. Looking good. So that's Crosses of the Kingdom. I also pulled out, I don't think. I don't think I showed this last week. I think I maybe just talked about pulling it out. Um, I've just been going around the board on Stitchopoly, which is an event in Semi-Sane Stitchers. There's a password. <laughs> if you want to join Semi-Sane Stitchers, it is linked below. There is a password. Um, and the password this month is Lightsaber. So a couple of people had messaged me and somehow I had missed I had to go digging. I had to go digging to find what the password was for this month. But Stitchopoly is really fun. Uh, when I get to the higher number spots, I tend to work on the full coverage pieces. And then on the lower number spots, I work on um, oh, a little bit of Joyous Day. I'll show you Oh Joyous Day first. 
because I've continued to work on this uh, every day, just even if it's just a tiny little bit. This Ojoy Stay by Blackbird Design. Started it on inauguration day for inaugural stitch day and also first hundred days uh, with Zakia of Lady Wing Designs. She's stitching a different piece, but her inauguration piece she's stitching on every day uh, for the first hundred days. And I got some good progress on this um, as well this past week. So there we go. <gasps> da, da, da. I got some of the bird filled in and some more of this alphabet. I changed the color on the E and M to this pink because those are my initials. The rest of the alphabet is in these kind of gray and green tones. But I changed the E and the M to be my initials and I got, I need still need to do the little smear and crosses for the berries, but working on filling in that big beautiful bird that I love almost as much as I love this pair. So there it is, oh joy stay. I am stitching this on 36 count linen in boot camp from Be Stitch Me with, I think all called four threads. I think it's all called for. So that is first hundred days. So I work on that a little bit each day. And then I think last week I talked about maybe working on the waffle lot cell, and I did work on it at least one time for Stitch Chocolate. I think it might have just been once. So this is a waffle lot by Hands On Design. This is exclusive to the January uh, Retreat in a Box from Black Needle Society, their subscription. So um, if you got the box, then you got this, and if not, then there is still, I think, still some time. I think there's still a little bit of time to jump in for May, which is going to be rainbow themed. It's going to be fantastic. You can use the code MARTINI5 to get a discount on your very first box of your subscription, if you go box to box on your subscription. So uh, I am stitching this on a 32 count opalescent white, and I just pulled flosses from my stash that would match what was called for. And this is where I got to. So I almost, I almost have that whole um, frame done. So I'd done some, I had to pull it out and redo it. I made a mistake up here, uh, but that's waffle lot. I think I just worked on this just once, but I wanted to give it a little bit more love. These are the flosses I'm using. So I converted it to all color and cotton, one gentle art. One gentle art, one Victorian motto. They're all listed on my whip spreadsheet, but they're similar to what's charted, but maybe a little punched up. Might be a little bit brighter. This is super fun. I love all of Kathy's uh, charts. I am so excited for Needlework Expo. I have, what I bought one thing. One thing this week, nothing came in the mail. I've been doing very, very good because my birthday is next month and online needlework expo is next month. There's going to be so many new things <laughs> that, uh, yeah. I know last week I talked about getting things and kidding them up and starting them right away. That will probably go out the window with needlework expo. Okay. And then the last thing I worked on is one of my WIPGO projects for the month. And this has been getting the most time. And that's this button and beads kit from Mill Hill called Latte. Um, last weekend was the WIPGO weekend. It was WIPGO weekend. And I made my weekend goal of 500 stitches on this piece. And then I've worked on it even more since then. Um, but I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't work on my number 20 project. This is slated for a finish. And I think I've just gotten in that, I'm not rage finishing, but I've just decided that this needs to get finished this month. I need to power through and finish this because it was called, it's doable. And if I put it away, I don't know that I'll pull it back out and finish it again this year. So this is where I am up to on latte. See, I've gotten a lot of work. So I've gotten all of this up here done. I've gotten more 
of the mug done. I am getting close-ish on finishing all the cross stitches. There's a little bit of stitching in here and then down this side and then I need to fill in a couple more of these darker checkerboards. And that's it for the crosses and then I start beading. Oh, there's a handle. Um, but really and truly, I'm getting very close to finishing up all the cross stitches and then I start beading. And the beading, either I'm gonna whip through or it's gonna take a while and I'm not real sure which. So uh, yeah, so that's, that's Latte. And this has been getting probably the most attention out of anything this week. So I don't know, what do you think? Can I finish this before I see you next week? That'd be amazing. I actually have the frame. I bought a frame and everything for this and I know exactly where it's gonna hang. And this is like my third oldest whip, Harry Potter, is the oldest and then um, an Etsy friends pattern and then this one which I started in April April or May of 2019 why is it just hanging out I don't know we're gonna get it done gonna get it done so that's it do you guys do y'all do, do that like you just get it in your head you're like that's it this is I'm finishing this that's where I that's where I got to with that last week I'm like hmm I'm not even going, my other whip go piece for the month is Enjoy the Sunshine, which is a Tempting Tangle stitch along. And it's a big piece slated for 12 days this year on whip go. And I haven't even touched it because I just, I got very focused on latte. So that's it. That's all, that's, that's it. It's all the stitching projects I have. See, I told you it was a light, it was light stitching week, but I have knitting finishes and knitting new starts. You ready to see some knitting? Okay, first things first, because I think I was very, very close when I saw you last week. I did finish my very Brady cowl. <gasps> Look! I ended up doing two more repeats than what the pattern called for. And I think being a newer knitter, because I was, you know, kind of putting it on, and I thought, well, I don't want it super tight. You're kind of a thick neck. Um, and I had plenty of yarn so I did two more repeats and I think being a newer knitter I um underestimate how much stuff kind of grows when you block it out so I so I just sprayed blocked it and look how beautiful those cables blocked out I love it so much and it's so soft and I have been wearing it pretty much constantly so it is a little looser but I don't mind it at all so it's a little bit of a looser cowl, but it's so cozy. And when it was snowy and cold all weekend, I wore it for like two or three days straight after I finished it. So there it is. It's so soft and pretty and I love it. Okay, so that's finish number one. Finish number two is, you've already seen this sock. It's a pair of socks and they fit. Okay, so the second one I did um, use a smaller needle. I went down one needle size on the cuff. I left everyone the same and you can see that totally helped. Look, totally helped. One needle size smaller was the perfect thing. I think, um, I do think I would like a two by two rib a little better, just the look of it. So on Becca's socks, I think I'm gonna do a two by two rib, but they fit. They are definitely not perfect in any way, but they fit and they're cozy and I've been wearing them. <laughs> socks! Uh, I haven't washed them. Do you block socks? Blocking socks seems like not the right thing because then they get all stretched out. Like they stretch on your feet anyway. So, uh, so there we go. First pair of hand knit socks. I'm so excited. And I still have like a decent amount of yarn from each uh, one of these. I have like 17 grams. So they came in 50 gram balls. So I have like 17 grams. So what I'm thinking is after you do a few pairs of socks, I, I am now understanding the scrappy sock. I'm understanding the scrappy sock and I think I'm gonna be in for it because if I'm just wearing socks around the house to keep my feet warm, who cares? Who cares if they're scrappy? But Look at this, I'm wearing knitting. Does this make me a knitter? I think I'm officially a knitter now. Okay. And 
then I had a new cast on on Valentine's Day. And this was the only piece of haul stash acquisition that came in the mail. And I've already put it to use for this project. Are you all ready for this knitting bag? It's a knitting bag that I got from, oh, I don't have a card. It's from Trish at Threads Entwined. She posted it on her Threads Entwined D-Stash Instagram account. And I, but the card was like a different Etsy that she sent with it. It was a different Etsy shop. And I'm not sure if she sells through that shop as well, but I will link it below. However, I know that she's been posting up bags on her Threads Entwined D-Stash. And this bag is so cozy. I will buy more bags from her. But I could not resist the fabric because look at this. This fabric and look look at the beautiful like feather zipper pull handle um this fabric is amazing but wait till you see the other side i mean look at the like irritated cat i love him so much uh but wait till you see the other side this is why i really had to have it oh look at this guy potion number nine <laughs> so good so good green bottom fantastic and look at the inside Boom. Oops. Hearts. So what's in here? What's in here is my new project that I cast on on Sunday. And that is The Land of Sweets Cowl by Curious Handmade, Helen Stewart. I know lots of people have knit this. I think uh, Michelle Bendy is like knitting her second one. And now I'm, I'm in. I'm in on the cowl bandwagon. They're so cozy. Uh... So I cast this on along with my friend Deborah at Stitch the Stash because we had bought the exact same yarn order from the lemonade shop and uh, we had the, ended up with the same idea of what to start. So here's the main colorway. It is, it's showing up so bright. It's not, I mean, it's bright, but it's not this bright. So this is Dr. Love's Testometer, I think, and it was her Valentine's Day color. Um, color uh, so I'm not sure it's in the shop now I'll link her below though lemonade shop because this yarn is so yummy and then she also had a Valentine's Day mini skein set mini skeins <laughs> that I'm clearly making a mess of but look at those coral and pink and red so good so what I'm doing is the cowl is really kind of written for an advent. So it's 24 like tiny little sections. They're just eight rounds. Each section is just eight rounds. There's 24 of them. So I am alternating between this and one of the mini skeins. And I'm just gonna grab it at random. So I got a decent start, not a huge start, but a decent start here. Let me take that off so that you can see. Here we go. So here is the start of my cowl. So you can see I'm on like the third section. So I started with this main colorway and then I pulled the light pink with like hot pink speckles. Here, I'm gonna, seriously, it looks neon in this light. Don't know what's up. Let's see if I can. Oh, that that's a little better. It still looks pretty neon. It's not that neon, but there we go. It is just beautiful, fun Valentine's, and it was, it, it's really fun to stitch because it's just eight rounds, and then you switch, and then you switch to a different color. So I have a few more rounds to go on the third section, and then I'll just reach in and grab a mini skein, and I'm going to go completely random, just like that. I think uh, I'll get at least two sections out of each mini skein potentially three. They just don't take up a lot of, um, I need to weigh that one little mini skein and my stitch marker because it's Land of Sweets. This is from Fangirl Fibers and this is part of her Great British Bake Off set that I got. And I thought that'd be perfect for the Land of Sweets cowl. So excited. All right, so that's really fun. So knitting plans, I'm going to work on this and Becca Socks. Uh, those are the plans for knitting is Land of Sweets Cowl and Becca Socks.
stitching, I'm going to be working on Farewell to Anger for the full coverage. Latte, maybe get that finished up today. Later today, I'm going to be working on uh, Star Sprite anniversary piece because it's the 18th. And on the 18th, I always work on my anniversary piece. Probably going to pull out Christmas Sampler 2 to get the next letter done on that. And then, I don't know. It's a little sweet -wee. It's a little sweet -wee here in February. I am starting to make some plans for March. And I'm planning on doing March Madness again this year with Steel City Stitchers. I, they've, they've mentioned March Madness. I need to go and look and see if they have a bracket up yet. So last year, Steel City Stitchers, who if you're not watching, you've got to watch uh, four fantastic... Uh, friends from Pittsburgh, which is where I grew up. I grew up in Pittsburgh, mostly. We moved around a bit, but I mostly grew up in Pittsburgh. Uh, and they have fantastic floss too. Last year, they did this little event called March Madness where you put some projects on a like bracket, like a basketball bracket, and you pitted them up against each other. And the idea was to finish an FFO, like whatever the winner was. So I tweaked it a little bit last year. I ended up with like three finishes by doing March Madness. And I picked all small projects last year. Some whips, some new starts. So I think I'm going to do the same thing this year. Do maybe half and half. I'm not totally sure. I started kidding up a little bit. And... uh yeah, so we'll have to see. So I started, I have a much, you end up with two, four, six, eight. You pick eight projects for the bracket. Uh, I have a list of way more than eight projects, so I'm going to have to narrow it down. But I've been doing a little bit of kidding up and getting ready for March Madness. So that'll be fun. All right. Mm, I think that's it. That's all I have. I, this is quick. I cannot believe it's gonna be half an hour. A half an hour? Who am I? What is happening that floss tube's gonna be this short? I guess I just don't. There's not much going on. We're kind of in that slog where there's not much. There's not much happening, and uh, we still aren't really going anywhere. Our family is not. We're there's still quite a few restrictions here in Washington, and we're just we're choosing to. Just stay home as much as possible still and keep things pretty tight. Vaccines are coming. I cannot wait. Uh, but until then, we're just we're doing our part to not give this virus any more bodies to mutate in. So not much is going on. We're in school winter slog. School and work and hanging out at home. That's okay. That's okay by me. I'm kind of a homebody anyway, but I do miss traveling. <laughs> when I'm home, I like to be home. And I love to travel. So let's see. Oh, I did have one other thing I purchased this week. And I think I was so excited to talk about it when I bought it. I think everybody knows about it anyway, but I'm going to show you. I, of course, grabbed Whistle Stop Stitcher's uh, newest design, Chester's Place. So this is by... Whistle Stop Stitcher. I will uh, link her below, her Etsy shop below, where you can get this. It is a charity pattern. Her sister, or sister-in-law, I think, adopted this adorable little guy. This is Chester. He wears a bow tie. And she had adopted him, and he he's a little older, and he's a lot of dental work. So it was a fundraising pattern. It was a fundraising pattern for Chester for his dental work. They met that goal like within 24 hours because I mean, come on, look at it. Beautiful border, house, animals, fantabulous quote. So it says, until one has loved an animal, a part of one's soul remains unawakened. So true, so true. So of course, this sold out right, like she put up enough in her shop to cover Chester's dental work and those sold in like a day. So she put it back up with proceeds going to the animal foundation that Chester came from. So I love it. 
I'm hoping somebody's going to like, we, we all need to start it because we all have it, right? I don't want to put this on March Madness as a start because look at it. Like that's not going to, I don't know how big it is, big enough uh, that that's not going to finish up. But I, but I do want to start this soon. I want to start it soon. I got to find a pretty fabric for it uh, and get it kitted up. So Whistle Stop Stitcher Designs, I'm sure there will be a hashtag. I'm sure there will be a start along and a hashtag and I will be there with bells on when it starts. Okay, giveaway, that's it. Knitting bag and one chart. I'm telling you, I've been really good. There's going to be an avalanche of new things after <laughs> your work so. All right, so last week's giveaway was for this adorable Cricut collection. Uh, Rabbit's Delight. Fun little Eastern pa Easter pattern. And like, really? St. Patrick's Day is coming up and I should get out St. Patrick's Day stuff. I think I have one or two St. Patrick's Day stitches. I should maybe stitch some more smalls. Ooh, another fun new thing. Uh, Helen D. East Coast Crafter put up, I'll link her Instagram below. She did the most adorable little charted. I mean, Helen, if you do not watch Helen, East Coast Crafter, you have to check her out. She has the most amazing finishes. Uh, like fully finishes. She sews just, she's my FFO goals. In my head, I FFO like that. In reality, they pile up in a stair light box. But she charted the most adorable little uh, St. Patrick's Day pattern. So I might stitch that on St. Patrick's Day. We'll have to see. It's so cute. I will link it below. I, that was a tangent. Winner of the Cricut Collection Rabbit pattern from last week is Deborah Goeth, G-O-E-T-H-E, Goeth. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. But Deborah, you won, and you filled out the Google form. So if you want to win one of my giveaways, you have to fill out the Google form. It is linked in the description box. It's one of like the top three things. I think I have my email, my Instagram, and the Google Happy Mail form. So just fill that out so that I have your address, just like Deborah did, and maybe I will send you something. So Deborah, congratulations, this is coming to you. I'm excited to uh, see you stitch it up. I love this little rabbit with a heart. He's so cute. Okay, so that was last week's giveaway. This week's giveaway is, uh, I have been kidding some things up for March Madness uh, starts, and I came across these little floss drops that I have, floss biddies, and I thought they would be the perfect thing because maybe you're starting to kit up for maybe March Madness or Mania. Um, these are fantastic, but I just don't, I don't have any projects that I'm going to use them on uh, right now, and so I thought it'd be better for them to go to uh, a home, but they're plastic. They're really good quality. They're plastic, and they have like four different little designs. So there's floss, a thimble, scissors, and the needle. So how many are there in here? There's 20. So that's a like for a good pattern. And I think you could probably just put a sticker on the back with like maybe the DMC color if you're doing DMC. But so there, this is going to be the giveaway this week are these floss bitty floss drops. So if you want these, just use the word floss. F-L-O-S-S -S in your comments. Let me know. Do you prefer over dyed floss or DMC? How do you normally kit up? My DMC, I bobbinate. I'm still a old school bobbinator uh, and my over dyes, I tend to just leave on the cards they come on and put them on a ring. So, but I love the idea of these, uh, especially for DMC. Then you could be like Nicole and Needlework. She, hers always looks so beautiful on her floss drops. So that's the giveaway for this week. That's it. That's all I have for you. I hope everybody, again, I hope everybody's staying warm and safe. And uh, yeah, as, as my friend Andy said, I, let's quit living through historic times. <laughs> I think we've all had enough with living through historic times. Uh, but let's just... Let's, let's band together and take care of each other 
uh, and, and get through the last of these historic times. So until I see you next week, cheers. <laughs>